and we will let you enjoy the silence of this um, papal pilgrimage, really, to this spot of terror and pain for so many. Pope Benedict XVI now making his way to the foundations of the World Trade Center. listening in by radio. This is EWTN News continuing coverage of Pope Benedict at Ground Zero in Lower Manhattan. A moment of private prayer. Before a candle that, uh, that will be brought to him by uh, an employee of the Port Authority who owns this land. Pope Benedict now lighting a candle of remembrance here. Following a moment of private prayer. It's a windy, blustery day here in New York, a damp day, and uh, keeping that flame lit is, could be a problem. That poor fellow, is he having trouble lighting that table? Yeah. If it's as windy down there as it is I here. See. Yes, indeed. Windy and wet today. Yes. There we ah, go. Ah, there it is. The folk almost had it lit. Now they're just bringing in the lighter. 
now we're about to hear in Latin, does anybody have a match? <laughs> candle of remembrance now lit and the Holy Father has a short prayer that he will offer here at Ground Zero and it looks like you'll be able to hear it initially this was to be a silent affair but that is apparently not the case O oh God of love, compassion and healing look on us people of many different faiths and traditions who gather today at this side the sin of incredible violence and pain. We ask you in your goodness to give eternal light and peace to all who died here, to heroic first responders, our firefighters, police officers, emergency service workers, and Port Authority personnel, along with all the innocent men and women who, are, who were victims of this tragedy, simply because their work or service brought them here on September 11, 2001. We ask you in your compassion to bring healing to those who because of their presence here that day suffer from injuries and illness. Heal to the pain of still grieving families and all who lost loved ones in this tragedy. Give them strength to continue their lives with courage and hope. We are mindful as well of those who suffered death injury and loss on the same day at the Pentagon and in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Our hearts are one with theirs as our prayer embraces their pain and suffering. God of peace, bring your peace to our violent world. Peace in the hearts of all men and women and peace among the nations of the earth. Turn to your way of love those whose hearts and minds are consumed with hatred. God of understanding, overwhelmed by the magnitude of this tragedy, we seek your light and guidance as we confront such, such terrible events. Grant that those whose lives were spared may live such the lives lost here may not have been lost in vain. Comfort and console us, strengthen us in hope, and give us the wisdom and courage to work tirelessly for the world where true peace and love reign among nations and in the hearts of all. Now Pope Benedict will bless this ground in four directions. Then I expect he will meet individually with the survivors gathered here. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. May he look upon you with kindness and give you his peace. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. CWTN News live coverage of Pope Benedict XVI at Ground Zero. I'm Raymond Arroyo, joined on set by Peggy Noonan, columnist for the Wall Street Journal, who has a fantastic piece in today's uh, New York Post, which you should look up online. Nice to see the fireman uh, genuflect before the Pope. Many of these rescue workers and first relief workers were indeed Catholic with that sense of sacrifice so ingrained in them. Absolutely. I always like to point that out. They had not only fabulous professional training, they're not only tough guys, they're not only guys who can take it and do the job, but they were also, so many of them, Roman Catholics who had been brought up in a certain tradition.
I like to see people kiss the Pope's ring. Mm -hmm. It makes me happy. It's old school, <laughs> and it is the old respect, and it is a beautiful yes. thing. No, it's a lovely sign of respect. Look at this. Oh. Obviously having difficulty walking, probably as, as a result of uh, something he endured here, or in the line of beauty, and yet he made the attempt to genuflect. Look at the concern in the Pope's face. I see Cardinal Egan has notes on each person who's coming before the mm -hmm. Pope and can fill in the Pope on why this gentleman or lady is there and has a role and a mm -hmm. place in this moment today. I was thinking, Raymond, this man is 81 years old. He turned 81 on this trip, as you well know. Sure. He has been working essentially 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. or midnight days. Mm -hmm. He has not flagged. He has ahead of him today a mass at Yankee Stadium. Tell us what he has. Do you know what's it, coming it, up? The mass at Yankee Stadium and then the departure. You know, there's a departure ceremony later in the evening. I believe he departs around 7.30 or 8 o'clock. But it's a long day on tap. And for an 81-year-old man, he has kept a, a rigorous schedule. I'll read the names of some of these uh, individuals you're seeing come forward. The, the order seems to be out of, uh, out of line, but I'll, I'll run through the names. Ernesto Butcher, John Carlson, Salvatore <coughs> Cassano, Migdalia Colon, Kathleen... Coratolo, Helga Curtin, Miguel Cruz, Mary Danahy, Monsignor Emmett Fagan, Christy Ferrer, Desiree Gerasimovic, Laura Grigoitz, Paul Hargrove, Eileen Hoey, Dimfna Jessex, Joseph Kelly, Linda Lito, Eileen Lugano, Julie Malik, Rose Maza, John McLaughlin, Jean Palombo, Thomas Riches, and James Smith. Monsignor Fagan there. The Christy Ferrer, whom you mentioned, Raymond, mm -hmm. lost her husband. He, he was involved in the running of the Twin Towers, and she lost her husband. He died that day. Mm -hmm. She lost her husband, and she has become a 9-11 activist in terms of reminding people of what was lost and what must be respected. She wrote a striking piece in the New York Times in the months after 9-11 talking about how tourists were going there and tramping through the mud. And she said, don't you know this is hollowed ground? Mm. Don't you understand this is where they still left, rest, those who were lost? Mm. It's very striking, very moving. And the Pope today is really underscoring that. The, the, the whole solemnity and the whole uh, form that this event has taken, it almost feels like a burial service in some mm. ways. I w I'm wondering if it might mark a beginning of a greater seriousness in New York among our political and business leaders with regard to what will become of that space where stood the Twin Towers. In the way of the modern world and in the way of New York, progress and building and making something remarkable of that area has been held back by politics and financial... Repeatedly. Mischief. There's always a lot of mischief. Mm -hmm. Well, there, there really should be some sort of shrine or, or permanent marker I think here so. for those whose remains remain. Certainly one to the firemen. Mm -hmm. When everybody ran away, the firemen ran in. When everybody fled, the firemen arrived, tried to save people. There should be a wonderful statue to the firemen of New York at the place of 9-11. And the names of those who died there should be engraved on the bottom, and their children should come and look at it, and they should see a heroic statue that reminds them of who their fathers were. Mm.
And if that's not politically correct, too bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, and believe you, me, it's not politically correct. And neither you or this Pope is terribly concerned about being politically correct, so you're in good company today, Peggy. The Pope's taking time with each of these survivors in their own way. Some were there that day. Others are the remaining family left behind by these heroes who were caught on that day of tragedy. The intensity with which the Pope listens, this is something so striking about Pope Benedict, uh, even as Cardinal Ratzinger, when you, you'd meet with him, he would meet your gaze and, and it's almost as if he's unblinking, the way he takes people in, that mind is listening very intently. You know, it's not sort of a casual thing or a bothersome thing. I know what you mean. He's like a thoughtful intellectual who yet is in the moment. Yes. <laughs> He's not utterly abstract. You're, you're he is there right. with you. Yes. But he is uh, not a man of, of the quickest, most facile charm, if you know what no, I mean. No. He's not all grins and backslapping. He is. That's right. And some are, and that's fine. But, yeah. but he is a, uh, a taker, inner, and a ponderer. Yeah. And you see the pastor today, the pastoral side of Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. Yeah, lovely wanna, New York. I, I always want to call him Joseph Ratzinger, having gone. To of course you <laughs> do. You know, he was Cardinal Ratzinger for so long that we all we all forget. Sometimes yeah. when I was in Rome recently, and we were talking about the Pope now and then, as conversations went forward, and we all got intense. I'd say, "Yeah, but Ratzinger thinks this." <laughs> <laughs> I have to stop myself. We all got so used to his yes. vivid presence as a cardinal of the church. Now, what did you think of seeing him in Rome? I know you were with some uh, the, some friends of mine from Washington in, uh, on a recent trip to Rome. Oh, what yes. was that like? It was fabulous. It was a pilgrimage of women who lived busy lives and who wanted to get together. You almost have to talk in cliches when you speak of something like this, but they wanted to get together, become regrounded or refreshed in their faith, and become closer with each other. Very busy women who live uh, worldly lives, mm. journalists and such. And we, did, we went to the uh, mass in St. Peter's Square marking the third anniversary of the death of John Paul, mm -hmm. and Pope Benedict, of course, spoke. And afterwards, of course, I don't know, 40, 50, 60,000 people were there, of course. Big Polish delegation yeah. there for John Paul. It was very beautiful. But afterwards, Benedict came through the crowd on the Pope Mobile, and we were able to get close. And I was able to look at him and to see those deep, sunk eyes and to be touched at how he tries to enact the public role of the papacy and I think he enacts it with a certain amount of comfort now. Mayor Bloomberg now meeting with uh, Pope Benedict. Mayor Bloomberg gave lovely remarks in St. Patrick's yesterday welcoming the Pope and saying in how many countries can a middle-class Jewish kid with a name like Bloomberg come and say, welcome to the Pope. <laughs> he was so cute. I know, he was really quite good, and, and that was before the, uh, the service yesterday. That's John Corzine, yeah. the Democratic Senator from the state of New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Himself sometime back, injured in a very bad car crash. Mm -hmm. I can see he's probably fully recovered. He certainly looks yeah. it. I believe that is David Patterson, the new governor of New York. He kissed the Pope's ring. You know, when watching people step away, Benedict gets this sort of faraway look, this very solemn almost sad look you know uh, he, he I think he's really absorbed this place
Raymond, you know who had a, a beautiful moment saying hello to the Pope in the Washington ceremony? I was so touched. There was a woman in the reception line who came forward and bowed to the Pope with great grace and took his hand and kissed his ring. And he was touched by her grace, I think, and they spoke for a few moments. And she turned and went back into line, and I saw it was Nancy Pelosi, oh. the Speaker of the United States House of Representatives. Very sweet. That.